Um, I don't know. I guess because I've never done these kind of performances with someone else, so my feeling is to kind of just write what you feel, and then I'm kind of sort of almost translating it into a ritual, thinking of stuff that I feel. So uh, that's not helpful. Um, because like the way that I think about what I'm going to wear for these performances is quite funny, but also obviously based in like loads of just difficulties with thinking about what I'm wearing or what I look like. But often it is like, you know, like I'll wear big pentagram earrings, but that's ridiculous. Or there's not going to be very many black people involved in this because it's the art world. To the point where like it's so great to have like, track voices on the line of accepted things that I've been programmed mm -hmm. and it's how I then subvert that and change which I can say to me it's about having these explicit conversations it's about bringing it into the art it's about letting them know it's about like explicitly saying that it's about doing work that's not going to make them happy um, doing work that's going to challenge them finding ways to like bring it into conversation and then you see their faces kind of change and so they call you and their idea of the token is that they bring you and that makes them look good because yeah. it makes them look like they've got a bit more the diverse lineup, and then they bring it to the space of it's going to aggressively challenge them. Mm -hmm. They may not fight back after that, but it's <laughs> like then they infiltrate that space in a successful way. So, we talked about how, like, so I'm getting 400 pounds to do this project, you're getting 100 pounds to do it. Like, it's kind of part of my fear is like finding exciting people, you know what I mean? And it's, I feel like, often the more like visibility happens, the more I'm seeing like skinny, usually white, like sort of people who have a particular look right. and it's quite so, difficult. Yeah, there's definitely this like gentle bit of artist brown. Yes. It's like coming out there and it's finding super great. And I always come out and I want I can't want to go back on that. <laughs>
To dodge bullets whilst ensuring your heels don't sink into cracks of sidewalks. To seamlessly sashay away from birdship while still working in fiercely cis fingers clip. To shield ears from loud sirens whilst trying to remember the directions to the tube. It's learning how to paint nails at the same time as clenching fists. It's remembering algebraic rhythms whilst trying to get dressed, knowing the X skirt plus Y top equals this, and always knowing how to change that frown to a smile because no one likes a sad trans kid. Be happy you made it to the party whilst keeping your hand on your lid. To be the life of the dance floor whilst assuring them that this is only dress up. It is to be sure you are not trying to emulate them whilst being certain not to deviate too far. It is making sure you do not catch their eye while still letting them look. Welcome the curiosity, but never ask questions. To instantaneously avoid showing your face whilst ensuring you are still serving it, girl, I mean, oh boy, it is to take, but to give. To be stealth, yet cut open, to hide, but wear the martyrdom of visibility. To be mute, but know how to scream loud enough so the main road can hear you say yas always, but know when to stay in your place yourself awkwardly at the borders of gaze. And in secrecy you like being trans, but never say it out loudly, tell your cis girlfriend she is fierce once every two weeks so they do not suspect you to be humanly possible to dodge 30 things at once. You wonder how it is possible to survive, it becomes too real, it's learning how to imagine all the ways your commute could be safer, but never write it down, play your oppression, because you don't want to make it awkwardly, remind them of your pronouns, but never say it with conviction. To be trans is to learn to love to be convicted. It is learning to split yourself in 45 pieces while still looking pristine. It is to be apologetic but be expected to wear confidence. It is to be in constant obstacle course, to be a constant obstacle course, be a constant obstacle, obstructing them obtusely, obstruct them coarsely, it is to be their assault course. Avoiding the party I'm on Facebook, and a friend posts a story written by a woman who read a story about a man who was ejected from an aeroplane. She says that this is her biggest fear. I also hate flying because I'm always terrified that the seatbelt's not going to be long enough to get over my belly, or that I'll be seated in the middle, or that the person next to me will hate me. You probably don't want know that I worry about being fat because I also post loads of amazing selfies on Instagram. But in these kind of situations, like having to be in aeroplanes, or to sit in chairs, or small bathroom cubicles, or at restaurants, or in cars, or in trains, or buses, or generally next to other people, or at the cinema, or alone with others at a restaurant, or in any other kind of eating environment, or say at the beach. It's pretty awful. But I think about the man being ejected from the aeroplane, and immediately I think of throwing him off of the aeroplane as it's falling from the sky, and people scream and the fat man is ejected, like there's a coiled spring under his seat and he is sitting on the seat, and then when he is ejected he goes through a hatch in the roof, and then the plane manages to soar back into the air because it's obviously a lot lighter. And everyone cheers and the fat man falls to his death. But actually, I realise I got it wrong. Because actually, what happens when people are ejected from an aeroplane is that it's the aeroplane that's the one that is on fire and then crashes and burns. And hey, maybe the fat man on the ejector seat floats happily downwards into the sea. And then maybe he stays there long enough that he grows a tail. And he swims up and he gnashes his teeth and he's weightless underwater. And eventually he bites into the fiber optic cables down there and breaks the internet once and for all. This isn't what she meant when she said ejected though. What she meant, the person writing about the fat man ejected from the aeroplane, is that the fat man was forced to leave the plane because someone sitting next to him complained about him being fat and that made her uncomfortable. And apparently airline companies are allowed to make fat people leave planes. So you had to walk down the aisle past a hundred and whatever people. Ejecting is also vomiting, abjecting, throwing up, removing. And so this fat man was forced to leave the plane and he couldn't go home. I was walking home at about 2 p.m. and it was in the afternoon and I had already been to one lecture and that was enough for the day. It was pretty bright outside so I decided to walk across Waterloo Bridge because it's nice to see the sun from there. 
It was the post-lunchtime rush, where everyone is making sure they are going as quickly as possible to get back to their offices and stores. The bridge almost felt like that typical London cliché film scene of conveyor belts of people never smiling, always moving along, looking down and not standing out. I guess I stood out because under this hetero patriarchy that favours whiteness and masculinity, a black binary breaking femme kid in a full PVC outfit will always draw some eyes. So, like, the first time that Travis and I met was at this queer fashion show, and I was, like, the fat person, so I wore this silver holographic crop top thing that I wear, and my shtick was to eat a chicken mayo burger, thingy. Uh, like, I thought, hey, I can be super fat positive and eat this chicken mayo burger as part of the thing. And people said, wow, people said they're so brave to be putting more chicken mayo burger into that budgie. <laughs> people said, oh, I can never pull that off. For the finale, I carried one of my best friends, a skinny hot mask person who is often in the paper for being non binary and attractive. And I carried them on my shoulders. I'm carrying them on my shoulders, and later someone tells them how great it was when that person carried them on their shoulders. And I'm literally standing right next to them. And I'm ejected, and. People looked up from their phones only for a break to cast their eyes on me instead. Dodging their eyes and glances, I, I carried on. I didn't have the luxury of focusing on my phone because survival needs both eyes awake. Others say, wow, you're so brave. You go, girl. I say, well, actually, I'm not really. I wish that I had that kind of confidence. I got to the middle of the bridge and the wind picked up. At first, I thought this was because of physics or the height of the bridge or maybe just some act of wind. But whilst also about to fix the head wrap on my head, I calculated the probability that something was coming towards my face. Instincts birthed from transness mixed with blackness, I gave a swift dodge. Every single artist and the creators at my gallery in London is super skinny and have super long flowing hair. Even my favourites, they pose with nipple pasties and sexy bras that they fit into and post everything on Instagram. Both ID magazine and Vogue come to my house. And then my fat friend was no eating the chicken mayo burger. As if they weren't even bothered by the situation. They kept their eyes down as if disappointed with how it played out. Disappointed that the man is disappointed that my body was on the ground. Disappointed that he didn't hit. Disappointed that my body didn't fall on the ground. Disappointed that the chicken mayo burger didn't hit me in my trans face. Disappointed that I'm still existing. Disappointed that I'm in this space. I mean, 
blackness will always be dangerous, but when it's keeping me somewhat safe in the sense that I'm not crossing binaries in the same way that people think I am, that day, like, people will notice that I'm not as eager to jump into conversation, I don't feel as comfortable, um, I'm, like, not feeling who I am myself, and it's that constant compromise of, like, well, do I want to be safe today, or do I want to be, like, me? thing as well that is really difficult for me to, to recognise is that like part of my fear of walking around at night is also based in racism. Like I grew up in a part in South Africa where it was like you were scared of black people. The like squad from it's really really bad and it's something that like is definitely there in me that I have to check all of the time. And it's like also totally bullshit because those are not the people who are asking me like, why do I feel fear of this person? Why was I talking to this person? I don't know, everyone always talks about affluence and wealth as like being a like synonym for safety. Yeah. But I was walking around the posh bit of Notting Hill and um, and some like white four-year-old dude, uh, and it was I don't know, it's like, not the same but similar like style with the proposition of like what you did tonight and like this flirtation like when I was a really fun confused yeah. um, and carried on walking. And then he came up behind me and was like, but if you're not going to fuck me, then I'll fuck you up. And it also, the fact that it was such a lot of 10 seconds, you know, and then it's like, oh, you wonder why, like, you're not interested in having sex with you or, like, men. Can you get a new toast at the door? What do you do? Usually I watch Buffy because she's really important. When this stuff happens, it brings up those other stuff, so you're not dealing with one instant, you're mm-hmm. dealing with like yeah. a lifetime. Ten bodies are expected to like withstand this and go to work, abuse on the street, on my way to a performance. Yeah. And it acts that like extra barrier of like we're just expected to carry on, not just like at fifty percent. But like actually most of the times we continue to then go into a space where we still have to be under an intense and yeah. all the people around us. Being harassed on the way to job interviews or on the way to performances or like spaces where you then have to perform your competency, have to get into that space is so hard. And this like thing that just stops your then like always noticing the gaze because it doesn't always have to be this shower. I think it's just this constant alertness. Like who gets the privilege to walk down the street and just be able to focus on their phone or in the hallway by the Friday in the house. And like if I've got time, I think I look like extra fucking good. I'll like stop, look into it, enjoy myself, take a selfie, send it to a friend because I know that as soon as you like leave that house, like that image is going to be completely tarnished. Being able to recognize all of these things in that moment, but then as soon as you leave the house, like I often will not even look up or make people's eyes. And what do you feel like when you're working groups? Um, sometimes really powerful, sometimes it's great when you have like a career in passing. Yeah, you start taking up space yeah. and not you start like only space, not just like being in the space, but saying actually like we're fucking enjoying ourselves. It's also like telling them that you have loads of things that you're not allowed to the white supremacy, like laughter, joy, humanity, friend. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely like a sense of taking space that is much easier and much more powerful when you do things together. You know, there's no time to be subconscious when the people around you see the view the way they want, I guess.
feel the silence was for those who said nothing. Simmer for as long as it takes to get from the Victoria Tube to Green Park. Simmer for as long as the silence is in a busy walkway. Simmer for as long as the bypass stands idly in the smoking area. Simmer for as long as the 171 bus takes to get to your stop, which is literally forever. Simmer. Command the space. Stand as straight as he did. Then slump to show that you are not. Then re-stand. Shout into the space the last three words that are in the public spirit. Tranny, shout, faggot, free. Shout it again. Tranny, faggot, free. Tranny, faggot, free. Tranny, faggot, free. As you wipe your bandage around the mirror, think about his gaze as no longer being a reflection of yourself. Say in your head or out loud, this is not a reflection of myself. I am more than this reflection. Try and hold your own gaze for as long as possible. Take the hair dryer and dry the bathroom mirror for the amount of minutes you have spent in front of the mirror, changing in hopes to keep you safe.
Take the bandage and write on it the words that were thrown at you. Put the bandage back inside your jar. Fill the jar with needles. Fill the jar with pins. Fill the jar with every thought of self-harm that you've ever had. Fill it with every man who thought that fuck off was an extended form of flirting. Fill it with the campaigns against sex workers. Fill it with not what to wear after 30. Fill it with Cosmo sex tips about putting grapes in your hands while you jerk off a man with a penis. A man who desperately wants to tell you what gender means because they know a lot about science. Fill it with all the times men have said no thanks after realising that you wear makeup. Fill it with all the times you have seen no blacks and femmes on Grinder. Fill it all the times that you have been done with mass for mass. Fill it with all the times you have seen people yas click you on stage and then not ask you how to get home. Fill it with all the times you have seen men enter spaces they have explicitly been told not to. Fill the jar with needles. Fill the jar with pins. Take the drink that was thrown in you and pour it in the jar. Later, with your bury this jar, or you'll smash it into pieces against the wall of your bedroom where you've never wanted to back up before, and it will stay in your face like the sheets and you will 100% deserve it. Take the mirror and shake it as many times as you have shook off that look. Turn it as many times as your head has in alleys, quickly like your reactions, hard like your resistance. It remains unbothered. It expected it. Remind your mirror that it should not expect it, that it also deserves care. Scream that the mirror deserves you care. You deserve care. Uh, how small, how big, how firm, how happy, how shit, how trans, how cis, how black, how thick, it deserves care. Scream it. You deserve care. Take your mirror and hold it to your chest. The same distance that that man was walking behind you on Vulcan Road. Whisper into your words of affirmation that your mother or your father or your best friend or your sister has told you. For every time this morning you thought leaving bed was not going to happen, it happened. Eat the chicken mayo burger that was thrown at you together. I vow to protect you more than the world has before. To use our power to turn the gaze of the aggressor into a shield built on our resistance. I vow to use the magic of our survival to create possibilities of togetherness. I vow to protect you more than the world has before.
And Travis wanted to talk to you a bit about the uh, African Caribbean network around the corner that's facing eviction. So I've been doing some work with this one. Yeah, I'm um, so excited from visiting, so I didn't have the chance to really do it, to go and research as much as I could, but I found on the internet that it's facing eviction. Um, I was really disgusted that the GI festival that is right next to it, and I heard two years ago had used the centre as an opening party, did not have any flyers about the eviction that they're facing or the GoFundMe page that they're raising. Um, it's such a shame when we look at a lineup of GI with like little or no black artists that the centre right next to it didn't have the initiative to join in solidarity with them and help fundraise. So I'd really appreciate it if folks could donate, get in touch with the African Culture Centre to see how we can support. Um, they've got their GoFundMe page, hassle GI to do more than they're doing, because I imagine what it would have looked like for a festival that draws so many people in if they pushed for the solidarity as much as they were pushing for other things. So yeah, thank you.